Welcome back to What Are T-Nibs for General Disturbance. This is an SU-100Y. It's the box tank. It's a tier 6 Soviet premium tank destroyer located on the southwest spawn of province. It's under the command of Heavy 999. Game on. Well, this tank destroyer is... There's only one prototype ever made of this and it was made from a T-100 heavy tank. The Soviets needed a self-propelled gun that could knock down gun emplacements and they needed the biggest gun they could get which was a 13 centimeter gun, a naval gun, the B-13S2 and they thought that uh, that would be useful for knocking down the bunkers. In fact they did make one prototype but they didn't make any more mainly because they didn't have any T-100 tanks left but mainly because instead they used and a 152mm howitzer and mounted it on a KV-1 to make the KV-2. Well, this one is capable of doing 440 Alpha and it will penetrate 196mm of armour with standard ammo and you can see with the premium rounds it actually goes down to 171mm but it goes up in terms of Alpha to 510. It's one of the most unusual vehicles in the game because you can actually increase your alpha by using the premium rounds but lower your penetration. Now so I think it was Quickie Baby who named it the box tank mainly because of the, the box like casement on this turret. Well it's not a turret, it's a casement yeah, which is a fixed box. And uh, the 13 centimeter naval gun, well the Soviets have actually been using 13 centimeter naval guns quite a lot. In fact the Slava class cruiser that was recently uh, sent on special underwater operations in the uh, Black Sea uh, actually has two 13 centimeter naval guns. Unfortunately, um, it uh, went on its special operations because it had an unexpected fire, which of course the Russians are not admitting actually came from two Neptune missiles hitting the vehicle. Hitting the ship. Oh, lovely! He's got his first kill. A Wolverine. Now, the lovely thing about this box tank is, so long as you don't get spotted by the enemy, uh, so they can actually shoot into your casement, it's actually quite deadly. Because if one of those rounds does hit an enemy vehicle, it normally uh, wipes it out or does severe damage to them. Our teammates are trying to muscle in. The SU-100Y also wants a share of the enemy. And we're dialing in on a budgie and he just took that shell because there was no kick up of dust from that so it looks like we hit him yes that su-100y is very keen on using that position not so keen on sharing it now it does have that very high alpha and um it does have that premium ammo which has more damage but it's actually, um, one of the good things about it is it does actually have a good hit point pool as well for this size of vehicle, 780 hit points. What's bad about it is though, it's a high priority target for any RT. It can move about quite fairly, uh, fairly well, 35 kilometers an hour top speed, but um, it's got very poor armor. 60 millimeters is the armor on the casement and on the front of the tank so it can be penned nice shot picks up a hundred and uh, or 395 off the excelsior and the excelsior has now been killed by the su 100 i think he was probably waiting for that so he could pick up that uh, extra bit of damage now is he going to poke his head around that corner there's a VK-30 on one inch up there, and if he's not careful, he backs up. He might actually take a round right through his rear. Oh, Archie's firing. Yeah, I heard the rumble in the distance, and that's normally the only clue you get if you don't have the... Uh... Oh, and he got the VK. That's the only clue you'll get if you haven't got the uh, early warning. Okay, he's reloaded, ready to go. I don't think he's going to get sight of that AMX-12 ton, but 
the issue 100 he might spot that he's holding on for this oh no he won't get the stalk now because the stalk has been taken out by the m10 rbfm who relocated over to the other side of the uh, battlefield oh that was a blind kill he guessed that the budgie was there and the same budgie he hit earlier in the game and this time round he hit him and took him out but he might want to back up away from this corner because the M41 knows he's here. And you can see RT rounds arcing through the sky in this direction. He's going to have another go. Well, you never know. Somebody might be there. What we can see is there is an enemy ARL 44 there. And you can easily pen that guy. And he does. 390 is the low roll. Give it another go if he has to. And that SU-100 of the enemy team is actually getting quite close. So I think he's going to deal with it directly. Hello, Mr. SU-100. Goodbye. Amarak! Yep, that was pretty final. 13 centimeter shell is so big, it's going to do a lot of damage. Okay, is that ARL in sight again? He must have popped out just for a brief moment because it looked like his icon moved. And I guess he's still there. But now he's gone. Taken out in the end by the SU-100. Now he moved further up. And uh, he's going heading north. Is he going to try another blind shot? Yes, he does. But again, he doesn't get anything. So, four kills so far. One totally blind kill on that uh, boogie. Blame it on the boogie. I know we could call it the budgie, but it's actually nice to blame it on the boogie. Well, there is an enemy box tank there in the distance. Oh my god, he just killed the RT! He just killed the Fifi on the enemy team with a blind shot. He was actually trying for the box tank. But the enemy Fifi was in the way and he took out the left. He's now trying for the box tank again. He just killed RT3485M. So we know the box tank is in that general area. And there's, there's still two left on the enemy team. The AMX 12 ton and that SU-100. And I guess he's now going to try and kill the AMX 12 ton. What an incredible shot. Trying to kill the enemy opposite number. He then kills somebody else by mistake. That means he's got five kills now. Of course, that means he's one short of getting a top gun. And seeing as he's got most of his hit points still intact, he could actually do this because he would overwhelm an AMX 12 ton. Although that guy's got an autoloader with four shots, he could literally overwhelm the guy with just one. Now, is he still in residence? I suspect he is. He was probably waiting for the opportunity to go all the way down to the south and kill the arty. Here he is. And hello. One shot's all it took. Yes, he must have been badly damaged. He managed to get one shot, 175mm round, into Heavy. But now Heavy is in a position. He's got his top gun. He can now get the seventh kill, which will be the enemy box tank. And the Type 64 might be able to find him for us. He does. So there he is. He's actually there around the corner. Oh, and the box tank just finished him off. But look at this. Oh, that went straight past the enemy box tank. Now, is he going to try to do the same to us? No, he's turned into the Abbey. Okay, he's going to take the quick route down, which is down the slip road here. Or down the side of the cliff. It's nice and convenient, that. Now, he won't go into the cap. 
at least he shouldn't because of course that would warn the enemy where you were it might actually encourage the enemy though to come out to play and that's what he's going to do he's going to encourage the enemy box tank to try and shoot him and of course that will give away the, the enemy box tank's position and then he can finish him off come out come out wherever you are this is really the good bit in most games where there's only one enemy left and you're just goading them to come out come and have a go if you think you're hard enough And here he comes. Yes! <laughs> and a brilliant win there for Heavy 999. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game for Heavy 999 in the box tank. He managed to get a demolition expert because he blew at least one tank up. That was the SU-100. Uh, yes, he took a hit to his ammo rack and went bang. He got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine. And he got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And the top gun for getting at least six kills. He ended up with seven. One short of a Radley's, but unfortunately he couldn't get the Radley's simply because there wasn't enough tanks left. But his win eight from that one was 7,974, which is Super Unicum Standard and a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. Highest damage was 2,821 hit points. The second highest damage was the Amex 12 ton that he actually shot at the end. That guy was fairly badly wounded at the end. He only took a small amount of uh, damage to actually kill him. Uh, but he had 2,258 hit points, so he was probably sitting up there taking pot shots at everyone he could uh, and getting quite a lot of damage, but uh, he couldn't get past the score that Heavy 999 managed to get. And the third highest damage went to the SU-100, the guy who was actually crowding out Heavy 999 on that corner. He managed to get 1,859 hit points in the end, but he didn't survive. When it came to kills, it was Heavy 999 with seven kills. Four kills went to that SU-100. Three kills went to the enemy box tank who had, uh, yes, he, he was uh, the last enemy to die. And when it came to base XP, yes, it's heavy again with 1,350, which means he's got the top in all three columns. And 840 went to the SU-100 and 592 went to the M10 RBFM on his team. The other player who was actually crowding him out on that corner. He fired only 15 rounds of ammunition, but he got 10 direct hits on the enemy and 9 penetrations, and 1 splash. Damage of 2,821 hit points, of which 1,705 were at more than 300 meters, so a lot of long-range shooting. And of course, remember those blind shots that he took, 5 of them missed, but of course he did get 2 kills with blind shots as well during that game. He did receive one hit. It was a penetration. Yes, he did get smacked by the uh, the uh, MX-12 ton. And he also received one hit by way of splash damage from the M41 HMC who flied around into that corner, which is a good thing to do if you're an RT because there's nearly always somebody in there. And if you can splash whoever's there, you might get some hit points. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, seven were killed, 136 hit points of damage assistance, and he managed to get 60 capture points before the box tank came down to try and finish the game. And uh, yes, he finished it on that guy instead. 74,363 credits for the game. And after repair and ammunition respite, took away 64,607 credits profit. 2,025 XP, 608 for this being a premium vehicle you actually buy, and 2,633 experience points altogether. Let's have a look at the armor for this thing. Yes, it's supposed to be a heavy tank, um, remember, on the base, but the casement is very, very thin. You can see the front plate, or the lower front plate, is 60, uh, but it angles out at 91 because it's angled. Upper plate, 60, again, 83.9. So it does have heavy tank characteristics on the front. You can see there's a weak spot there where the driver's port is, but like any KV-1 or any of the heavy tanks around that time, they saw, sort of had their weakness on where you actually look through the uh, the gaps and the weaknesses in the metal, the holes that they deliberately placed in the metal to enable people to see or to shoot guns. 
Uh, the casement itself is only 60 millimeters. You can see it actually gets slightly uh, bigger there around the mantlet. Uh, and that's actually obviously because of the reinforcement needed to hold that 13 centimeter gun. The casement's the same all the way around, 60 millimeters everywhere, uh, right at the back as well. The only cover that's not is the engine deck cover and that's 20 millimeters, but it's actually angled well enough that you can actually see, uh, see it to shoot it. And so you can get behind one of these and put holes in them, but just generally anywhere you fire on the casement, it's going to go through. Let's have a look at the uh, modules. The modules, well, yes, they're fairly easy ones to hit. There's the driver sitting up front. He's got the radio next to him. We've got two big Amorax in the casement, either side, very easy to aim at. We've got two gunners because it's a very big gun. And again, it effectively relies like an RT on elevation azimuth. Uh, and the tank command is on the left hand side behind one of the gunners. Now, uh, there is a loader, two of them sitting at the back, but they're in between the Amorax. So basically you just aim for the sides of the vehicle and shoot through there. There's the um, the engine and transmission at the rear. The fuel tanks are down low in the actual vehicle itself. So if you want to set fire to the thing, you actually have to aim for the center of the vehicle. If you were auto aimed on, you probably hit that. But the Amorax are much easier to hit. So aim for those and you should get a nice big bang. I hope you enjoyed that replay if you did. Please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and he does get hungry around about this time of day. And thank you for watching.